Hi, we're in the grocery department at Walmart. The question has been posed to me many times, if you're in a public place and there's a mass shooting, what will or won't serve as cover? Now that's what we're going to talk about today and we're going to be limiting the discussion to the items on grocery shelves. This comes with two very big caveats. One, there's a video titled Run, Hide, Fight. We have a link to it in the description. I recommend watching it. But when you watch it, you have to keep two things in mind. One, the people who made that presumed that those in the audience were not security personnel or police officers who have a responsibility to deal with the problem. They also presume those watching it will be unarmed when this happens. Keep that in mind when you watch it. The other caveat is the difference between cover and concealment. Concealment is protection from enemy view, cover protection from enemy fire. Now when we talk about cover as it applies to grocery items, the first thing we have to discuss is the shelf. When you look at this divider here that separates this aisle from the next, it's some kind of part of a pegboard. It's less than a quarter inch or six millimeters in thickness. Its bullet resistance is just about zero. But what about the items on the shelves? Well, we've got a grocery cart. Let's do some shopping, buy some things, take them out to the range, see what we can learn. Before we even start talking about grocery store items, there's a couple of demonstrations I have to do. You might think that these are superfluous demonstrations of axioms, but please bear with me. They are very necessary. What I have here is six layers of Owens Corning pink fiberglass insulation with a paper backing, and behind it is you. I'm going to shoot this from a distance of about five yards with my baby browning, which is loaded with Hornady Custom 25 ACP 35 grain jacket at hollow point. Insulation is not much of a bullet stop. This kind of insulation has about the same bullet resistance as cotton candy or maybe dense fog. Pretty close to zero. Right now you might be asking yourself, is there anybody that didn't know that? And the answer is yes, lots of people don't know that. When I've done demonstrations of shooting through sheetrock walls, and I tell the audience that the walls are not insulated because the insulation wouldn't really make any difference, I am inundated with commentary from people telling me how bad and wrong and stupid I am and that my demonstration was not valid because insulation would make a big difference because insulation is such a great bullet stop. No, it's not. Now let me show you something else. Now here's you and behind you is the new and approved high-tech fleece bullet stop, which is 40 layers of fleece. I'll shoot this from five yards with the 25, which is still loaded with the Hornady Custom 35 grain hollow points, and let's see what kind of results we get now. Looked fairly effective. And here's that bullet laying on the table. It didn't even penetrate the first layer of fleece. But let me show you something else. Now we have the high-tech fleece bullet stop in front of you. And I'll shoot this from five yards with our 25 ACP, which is still loaded with the Hornady Custom 35 grain hollow points. And let's see what kind of results we get now. Now, it didn't hit the bottle, but let's see where this bullet stopped. It made it through to about the 35th layer of fleece. So after it goes through the intended target, it doesn't even make it through one layer, but with nothing in front of the fleece, it makes it through about 35 layers. The point is, this fleece is not the bullet resistant material that a lot of people think it is. Let's try this again with a slightly larger pistol.
when shooting it with the 9x19, you can see that our fleece bullet stop doesn't stop much of anything. There's a lot of people who think that heavy winter clothing will stop bullets. I can't imagine what environment you'd be in where you'd wear something that thick. Even with the 25, it still made it through 35 layers. Now, let me show you one other thing. Now I have six boxes of cereal and three of you behind it. The bullet might deflect a little bit as it goes through the boxes, so I wanted to make you a little wider. And I'll shoot this from five yards with the 25. Now let's see how we do. Cereal may be good for breakfast, but it's not a very good bullet stop. Now you might wonder, what was the point of all this demonstration? Who would hide behind cereal? The point is, there are a lot of people who attribute bullet stopping capabilities to things that have very little bullet resistant properties. You can check out our presentation on the bullet resistance of stuff in your pockets to see more demonstrations of this. But this also shows us that a lot of the things on store shelves aren't bullet resistant. Now let's see if we can find some things that are. Now an interesting thing, when I shot through the cereal boxes with the 25, it looked like the first shot was stopped by the cereal. It was not. Upon closer examination, I could see that all three projectiles went through all six boxes. One of those projectiles was still stuck in one of the soda jugs. Those projectiles had very little energy left after going through the cereal but they still all went through all six boxes. And I want to reiterate my point. There are some people who will assign a certain degree of bullet resistance to things that is far greater than the degree of bullet resistance those things really have. There are also people who will assign certain limitations on the performance of various types of ammunition or projectiles that are far less than what that ammunition or those projectiles can really do. I could go on all day about things like the person who told me that a 22 long rifle, quote, won't go through a leather jacket, close quote. I could go on about the person who said that if I were standing on flat level ground, shooting on a flat level plane at a target of equal height to what I'm shooting, and I were shooting at that target with a 30-30, that by the time that bullet went 100 yards, it would, quote, hit the ground, close quote. Yeah, in reality, the bullet drop you're gonna get is about so much. I could go on for at least half an hour just on the back and forth I've had with a colleague about the limitations of a 20-gauge shotgun. To give you the short version, we came upon a clear cut, a squirrel jumped up on a stump, about 40 yards away, it was not a hickory stump, jumped up on a stump about 40 yards away, I go to shoot at it with my 20 gauge shotgun, and he gets indignant and says, you're gonna try to hit it from here? Yes. Shoot the squirrel off the stump, you should have seen his reaction, I thought he was gonna have an infarction, because he had no idea that a 20 gauge shotgun could do something like that. I could go on all day with this kind of stuff. And that's why I needed to do those demonstrations, just to make it clear that projectiles can have a lot more capabilities than a lot of people think they can. But now it's time to get serious. When you're talking about mass shootings, the perpetrator may be armed with a wide variety of things. But according to the sources I've seen, what's going to be by far the most common is something in caliber 5.56 NATO or something in caliber 9 by 19 and these are the two calibers I'll be using for the rest of today's demonstration. Now I've got my A1 platform loaded with the IMI 556 NATO 55 grain full metal jacket spear point projectile and I've got my Breda 92 FS loaded with Magtech 9 by 19 124 grain full metal jacket round nose. So let's shoot a few things that you might find on grocery shelves that perhaps have a chance of actually stopping these types of projectiles. What we have here is three of you and a lot of toilet paper in front of you. The projectile will have to go through six rolls of toilet paper to hit you. 
Paper is not much of a bullet stop, but when you have a lot of layers of it and those layers are tightly wound, it can have some bullet resistant properties. So I'll go back seven yards and I'll shoot this with my Breda 92FS loaded with the Magtech 124 grain full metal jacket round nose and let's see what happens. Well, I fired five rounds and it looks like three of them went all the way through. However, one of those projectiles was actually stopped by the plastic wrap on the back of the toilet paper package. So even though these projectiles were going through, they didn't have a lot of power left when they had. And whether or not they went through had a lot to do with how many rolls they went through and how many rolls they went between. But we can see that if you have enough toilet paper, it can have some bullet resistance. But now let's try that again, shooting from seven yards with our 5.56 NATO and see what happens. Well, since our first shot knocked all the jugs over, I've got those reset up and I'll shoot a couple more shots of 5.56 NATO from seven yards. So when we're shooting with 5.56 NATO, the bullet resistance of toilet paper is not too much. Let's try something else. Now you're hiding behind two 12 packs of Chef Boyardee spaghetti and meatballs and two 12 packs of great value green beans. Let's shoot this setup with a nine millimeter from seven yards. I fired two shots. Those two shots went through six cans each and still had plenty of power after they did. Let's set this up again and try this with 5.56. I fired two shots and although we see that the 5.56 did a lot more damage to the cans than the 9mm did, neither of those shots made it through to you. Now this brings up an important point. On many occasions, people have told me the blanket statement that 9mm will penetrate more than 5.56. This would seem to support that. However, in shooting the toilet paper, we saw that the 5.56 definitely penetrated more. And on previous occasions when I've shot things like cars, we've absolutely demonstrated that 5.56 will penetrate more than 9mm. It really comes down to your ammunition choices and whatever you're shooting at in terms of which one is going to penetrate more. This also shows us that the blanket statement that one will penetrate more than the other is like most blanket statements when it comes to firearms, just not really true. But what we can really take from this is, if someone's shooting at you with a 5.56 and it's loaded with 55 grain full metal jacket spear point, which is the most common type of ammunition, if you can get behind enough cans, looks like you might be okay, at least for the first few shots. So what about one gallon jugs of drinking water? We know that if you have enough water, it can stop bullets. If someone's shooting hollow points, water can be a very effective bullet stop. However, like I said earlier, according to the sources I've read, the most common type of ammunition for criminals to use is full metal jacket. So that's what we're using here today. So here's you, and the bullet will have to go through four one gallon jugs of water to get to you. Let's see if that's enough to stop our nine millimeter. doesn't look like you fared too well. I'll set up some new water jugs and we'll try this again. Looks like we have our results confirmed. I'll set this up again and we'll try it with 5.56. Well, you're not hurt and the third jug in line had a piece of the jacket in it, but the fourth jug in line had an entrance and exit hole. So if the bullet exited, why is there no damage to you? Because most of that bullet was sitting right here on the table, actually in, in this broken part of the table right here. So although it went all the way through, it had no energy left. Let's set up this demonstration again, try it one more time and see if we can confirm these results.
It may look like the water jug stopped the bullet, they really didn't. After the projectile went through the first two, it hit this jug above the water line. There's an entrance and exit hole showing that the bullet was deflected and it would have flown off somewhere over here. So did the water jug save you? Yes, but not in the way we intended. Let's try this one more time. In this case, the water jugs did save you. The bullet is actually in this fourth jug. I'll get it out of there and we'll take a close up look at it. And there it is, what's left of it. And it looks a lot like the other bullet that we recovered earlier. So the takeaways from all of this. One, we see that a lot of things that people think have a high level of bullet resistance really don't. Two, we see that although 5.56 NATO is a lot more powerful than 9x19, there are some mediums in which the 9x19 can give you greater penetration. Three, we see that a lot of the items on grocery store shelves, like boxes of cereal, have a level of bullet resistance that's down there pretty close to zero. Four, we see that some of those items that people would think would have a high level of bullet resistance, like canned goods or jugs of water, have less bullet resistance than many people think, and their bullet resistance is very short-lived. Those kind of things are only going to give you cover for the first few shots. Now, there are some grocery stores where at some times of year they'll have a big freezer bin and it'll be stacked full of frozen turkeys. You could hide behind that and it might provide a good level of cover. But for most of us, in most places, most times of the year, the items on grocery store shelves are going to provide a level of cover that is at best minimal. So, as always, don't try this at home on what you call a professional. And thanks for watching the Bullet Resistance of Grocery Store Items video.